Okay, uh, hello, this is Wampire here to give an explanation on my previous video that I just uploaded uh, the other day, yesterday. It's called Impossible to Keep Up with the Knife. Okay, so uh, that video is only like 17 seconds long, and uh, I gotta first of all explain what is the video. And it, it really is, I'm trying to show that it's impossible to keep up with the knife. And what we did was we had sofas put a chair behind my student. So he's basically cornered, okay? It doesn't look like it, but he is cornered. He He's not able to move around, okay? So that was what we did. And then from there, I just gave him some attacks. And um, you'll notice that I didn't go full force or super fast. Why? Because I didn't need to, to prove my point. And I didn't use my free hand. I didn't kick. I didn't do headbutts. I didn't do other stuff other than using the knife. Why? Because once again, I didn't need to, to prove my point. And what was my point? It is impossible to keep up with the knife. Okay. Um, and what happens there is he gets cut up. He gets stabbed and cut up, and um, what I was asking him to do, essentially, is can you become Neo from the Matrix? I'm going to give you all these attacks, and I want you to defend against them like Neo, the way Neo would be like dodging the bullets and stuff. I want you to do that against my knife attacks as best as you can. That's really what the exercise was. And the result is we already know, and, and um, it's very simple. It's humanly impossible. At medium range, and that's where I pretty much was, was in medium range, and I'm giving the attacks, you know, I'm, I'm attacking him, random attacks. It's just humanly impossible. Why? Because you don't have enough reflex time. And... That was true as slow as I was going. I wasn't going super fast. I wasn't like like trying to fake him out or anything like that. No. Even at that speed, he was getting cut up badly. Okay. Um, so that was my point. Okay. And there's very, very valuable lessons to learn from there. It's not just, look, the knife is devastating. It's scary. There's nothing you could do against it. It's game over. No, it's not a defeatist or very negative attitude like that. No, we are trying to do self-defense here. We're trying to protect ourselves against an attacker with a knife. So we're learning very valuable things, you know, from this. And that number one is that in medium range, like I said, you just don't have enough reaction time. That's why I've been telling you guys, you want to be in long range. You don't want to be in medium range, okay? So that's very valuable, and that gives you a strategy. If you have to go up, up against someone who has a knife, you go, oh, okay, it's possible as long as I'm in long range. So, you know, it gives you a very realistic way to start building your strategy. Number two is you always hear people say, you're going to get cut against someone who has a knife. Accept that. You know, it's almost cliche. People are saying just parroting that and it sounds good. What I'm saying is you need a shield and we don't want to get cut. I People say in a knife fight, you're going to get cut, expect to get cut. I That's not cool with me. I'm not going to accept that. that. Therefore, you need a shield and you need something in your hands because if you're just deflecting with your hands, yes, you can get cut. So there is definitely some truth to what they're saying, but that doesn't really help this, other than you tell yourself, this is really bad situation and I'm going to get cut. So if I do get cut, don't freak out. Other than that, people parroting that saying, in a knife fight, you're going to get cut. It doesn't help. What I'm saying is, let's make that into a useful information and that is grab something. Grab you know, anything to help you protect yourself better. Have shields. You know, if you have a backpack, put it over here and then use your hat, you know, or whatever it takes, you know, 
to protect yourself. Don't get cut. I don't want to get cut, okay? Um, yes, the chances of that is very high to get cut. So there's definitely some truth to that, but let's do something about it, okay? And that's what I'm here is to help you guys do something about it. So um, long range and with something, and, and that's why in Filipino martial arts, they teach us weapons and improvised weapons. That's, that's why we do that because it's clear advantage over barehanded, okay? Whether it's offense or defense. So the next thing that, that we could learn from this is We've heard, and, and this is probably uh, curious for a lot of people because I don't think a lot of people have downright said this, okay, is you've all heard of the prison knife attack, right? The, the repeated shanking, what the Dog Brothers call the sewing machine. So they bum rush you and they repeatedly stab you over and over and over again like that, right? So... When you look at traditional Filipino martial arts where when we're talking about knife stuff, the Filipino martial arts really, really goes deep into it. How come they don't teach that? How come that's not there? Okay, I'm not talking about some modern Filipino style, which they might have added that into the arsenal, but I'm talking about the traditional. I was never taught that. I've never seen anyone teach that in the traditional curriculums of Kia, Kali, Eskrima, Arnis. No one had ever brought that up, okay? It was only modern, you know, people going, hey, what about, let's try this out, or like that. That's the only time. Why is that, okay? Were they missing something? Did they not understand that this could be effective? No, of course. I believe 100% that they knew what they were doing and they knew what's up. In this video that I did, which is, once again, it's a short video, like 17 seconds. In it, if you watch the way that I am slashing and cutting at him, and it's not just me. Look up any Filipino martial arts instructor that is doing a similar exercise. They're going to do the same thing. They're, they're Basically, it's... They're free-flowing is what we're doing. So you try to block it here, then I come around. You know, you try to grab it, then I, I'm cutting your wrist already. You know, so you, you cannot keep up with this like water. It just flows around. So it is free-flow is what we're doing, right? At the end of the day, the free-flow attack is superior to the straight-in um, bull rush prison knife attack okay it's obviously more technical you have to be more technical to do free flow and it is superior there i said it flat out that's why in the filipino martial arts they teach free flow they teach that and they don't teach the prison um knife rush okay if i had done the prison knife rush to the student there's a chance that I might have got him and it would have been over or there's a chance that he would have grabbed my wrist and he would have neutralized me, okay? There's a dice roll there. It's, I don't, wanna, I don't know if it's 50-50, but it's definitely, there's a chance where I could totally get neutralized. Why? Because I'm predictable, okay? I'm a lot more predictable. So, and, and I'm doing the same motion in the same spot again and again and again, okay? Yes, I'm, I'm putting in a lot of force and effort, but if he's able to stop that initial, then from there, he can jam my arm and grab the wrist. And then from there, I got nothing. So I'm not saying that it's not effective. Obviously, we've seen camera footage of it being very, very effective. If you're able to surprise attack and land that first one in, then it is devastating. It's repeated, you know, it's nonstop. It is ferocious, okay? So don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that it is easier to deal with than free flow. And free flow is a superior attack, okay? So those are some of the lessons that you can get from this kind of um, training. So I just wanted to point that out. That's it for now. Thank you for viewing and take care, folks.